right, welcome to our latest Swamp Cast. Pat Dooley and Robbie Andrew, the Gainesville Sun. We're going to talk a little bit about Florida's game with Kentucky on Saturday. A night game, moved it to 7.30 instead of 7. They couldn't even give us that half hour, Robbie. <laughs> Deadline beckons. Well, and, and there's a reason for it. The game, the other game's better. I mean, um, Florida-Kentucky's an interesting game. But, again, when you've won a, a game like that 30 years in a row, I think it takes a little bit of the edge off. Although, yeah. up there, uh, people are pretty excited. First sellout they've had in a long time. And they're going to have a blue out. Um, you know. Those so. never work, though, Pat, it they seems never like. South Carolina leads the league, yeah. and them, those not working. But then they're even talking up there about the penalty they're going to get for like, yeah. soaring the field. Quarter of a million dollars. So maybe they will. Like, they were going to do it two years ago, too, but that didn't happen. If, if I'm Mitch Barnhart, though, aren't you just like, going to hire $100,000 worth of cops to keep yeah. people off the field? You, you save yeah, money. Let, let them go wild. Uh, but, of course, at first they got to win the game. Uh, it's going to be a tough one for Florida. This is a different – a Kentucky team. I wrote about it in my column Saturday. Uh, they are like an old school SEC team. They yeah, like they to play defense. Play defense against they the run. run the like ball. to run the yeah. ball. They're going to run a ton of Wildcat. They're going to run their Benny Snell in the Wildcat. Uh, Bowden, their uh, freshman, they, they love. They run him in the Wildcat. They run a lot of read option. But then just when you start coming up, boom, over the top yeah. they'll go. Uh, they're a tough team to defend. Now, that said, People have defended them pretty well yeah, so far. Yeah, really, they've really struggled, Pat. And the, the Snell kid, though, reminds me of Kelly a little bit. He's big, yeah. physical, fast, and Florida couldn't tackle him in the second half. We'll see if they can take care of this guy. But, you know, they worked on tackling last week. Didn't help. They worked on it again this week. We'll see what happens this time. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, here's the thing. I, I think when you have young freshmen like this, uh, all freshmen are young, but, I mean, not redshirt freshmen, but true freshmen playing, they're not physically ready yet. Yeah. And they may be physically ready to cover, but to, to come up there and, and keep hitting a 220-pound yeah, run running yeah, back. Yeah, they, they, they've never done that in their lives. I mean, you're play, playing against 150-pound backs in high school. Yeah. And, and you're totally and you're, different. Yeah, it's a totally different thing. So they're going to have to adjust in that way. And the linebackers, which are depleted again, uh, that's going to be a big issue. And I, I would imagine the Kentucky's going to just run, run, run. Yeah, Pat, they're going to grind the ball and grind, eat up the clock. I mean, they've done that in their first three games. I think they're going to try to do it again. And, you know, they, they're capable of doing that and make plays the fourth quarter, win the game, tear down the goalposts. With all the gnashing of teeth about the offense, I think that the bottom line is going to be it's going to come down to the defense. Yeah. The defense is going to have to get some three outs. They're going to have to stop them. They're going to not let – they can't let balls go over their heads. They're going to have to play physical and – and not let Kentucky just eat it up. I mean, if you get into a situation where Kentucky's driving 65 yards yeah, all the good. time, and even if they're getting field goals, and they got a great field goal kicker, and McGinnis, um, next thing you know, you're down, you know, 13 to nothing, and, and you've got to throw, and, yeah. and I don't think you want to put. Another thing that they do really well, too, is disguise coverages. Yeah. They'll play, you know, Franks, who right now does not know how to read coverages yet, is going to be put to a real test. We'll see how far he's yeah. come. Like Max said the other day, they've got to kind of walk him through this, you know, get him up to the line and walk him through and tell him where to go with the ball because you're right, he's struggling in that area right now. And Kentucky's good about mixing things up back there, disguising things. So it'll be a tough test for him. Yeah, I mean, he, um, uh, McElwain was saying that he missed six plays. If he hits three this week, yeah. they'll be fine. Uh, and I think that, that goes back to what we've talked about. And again, I don't want to talk too much about how much you guys hate the offense, okay? <laughs> but – if let's say Mark Thompson's touchdown run doesn't get called back for holding yeah. in the last game, Panera makes his field goal, uh, Malik, Malik Davis. Davis doesn't fumble the goal line, Frank sees Dre Massey wide open, wide twenty open. yards behind. Now the everybody's going, "Wow, this offense isn't too yeah. bad." Yeah, yeah they know? wouldn't look as bad. And Pat, in my mind, you look back to '93, Florida's offense was awful in that Kentucky game. Then they hit the Doring pass. Then after that, they took off. Yep. They gained a little confidence and took off. And I think. You might see maybe something similar to that happen here after last week. Yeah, and uh, and who knows whether that it truly lit a fire, the yeah. spark of, of that one play. But, you know, it's interesting. We were talking about this the other day on the radio. Uh, in 93, uh, redshirt freshman, same deal, yeah. up in Kentucky. His name was Danny Werfel, threw three picks, and later in that year lost his job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's not like you just, no. you know, like we all have a romantic view of, of things like that. But, it, it's hard when you're a redshirt freshman, and this is going to be a it tough is. test. Yeah, it definitely is. So, you know, the thing I like about Franks is he's been calm throughout. He's poised. Mm -hmm. It gives you a chance to execute plays. And you're right, they, he has not been that far off in both of these games in my mind. Well, and again, that goes back to that they have called some good plays. Yeah. You know, and I know that you don't think they have, but they have. The drive, the drive in the fourth quarter to answer Tennessee's touchdown was, after the kick return, was really a well-called drive, right. and they got right in the end zone. It was a 
I thought it was great. And I think Nussmeyer upstairs helps. Yeah, and I, I'll tell you, guys, I really feel this way, that this game's going to kind of decide where this season's going. Yeah. Because if you can go on the road and win this game, then you come home, you got three straight at home. Not Tough games all, but three straight at home. You can kind of get into a rhythm. Let's face it, this football team has been in no rhythm. When, no. You, when you think about, okay, you got to go to a weird place in, in Arlington, obviously. Then you come back, you have the hurricane, you have the game canceled, you, have a, you don't have a Monday practice. Yeah, you don't know if you're playing. Don't the next know if week. you're playing for a while, and then uh, you finally win the game on the Hail Mary. Or don't say Hail Mary. Yeah, it's not. It's oh, not a Hail Mary. Not. You know what I, I noticed watching the film room the other night? Brandon Powell was more open. Was he? He was wide up and down the sideline. Where was line. he at? On the right? He was down the right going down. Their safety just like they, that. They were convinced that they were going to go for a 30-yard yeah. play and kick a field goal, and they, they didn't bother to follow guys downfield, apparently. So maybe it's, they should run that play. Run, uh, what is it called? Yeah. Train right, open, uh, whatever I it is. I can't remember. Call it again. I, like I told back when after the game, you got to call that all well, the time. He said, he said maybe I should. Yeah, he should. Keep so. running it. Uh, so we'll see what happens. It'll be really interesting. Looking forward to going up there. It's always nice in, in Lexington. A little bit cooler than it'll be here. Good. And now one of the best, one of the, I think one of the three best press boxes in the SEC. So. Well, yeah, their their facility upgrades yeah. are impressive. Fact, I walked around that campus two years ago, and it was, it was everything was really good. Yeah, except for that one street where we were staying. That that was nasty. Yeah. They had garbage <laughs> everywhere. I need to pick up their garbage. All right, so that'll do it. We'll be back with you after the game. Facebook Live. We'll be giving you a. Uh, a look at what we thought about the game. I don't know when we're going to do it. Probably it'll be pretty One late morning, at night. Maybe, yeah. yeah, if you guys stay up, though, you'll be rewarded with another <laughs> Swampcast. Wow. Until next time, Pat Dooley and Robbie Andrews saying so long from the Sunshine State.